Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of Chow with Vlau and today I've got a really interesting but very very tasty dish for you. Cream of chicken and noodle soup. Let's do this. Now you might be asking yourself why I'm cooking cream of chicken and noodle soup where cream is not something we use a lot in Far Eastern cooking. It's far more a Western thing, right? Well the thing is this is kind of historic for me and very, very nostalgic because when my grandfather opened his restaurant back in the late 60s in a little town called Sleaford in Lincolnshire, UK, he used to do these lunch menus and it was like roast lamb, roast pork, roast chicken of all the trimmings. And it was always a three course meal. And the first course used to be a soup. One of my favorites was this very soup. And the great thing about it was, even though it, again, it sounds like a Western dish, there is a Chinese element of it because he used egg noodles, which I'm going to use today. And this is a fabulous, fabulous addition to it because not only does it add that nice filling element to it, it also adds a little bit of color to the soup without us adding any artificial colors because it makes the soup a little bit yellow, which is really, really cool. But most of all was the taste. It is so delicious. It's really creamy. It's got the elements of the noodle in it and obviously the chicken and the, the actual soup itself is just really, really warming and comforting. Fantastic for cold weather like we're experiencing now. My grandfather was a fascinating guy. He was one of the pioneers who came over from Hong Kong to the UK in the late 60s to start a new life for his family. And everything he did has echoes in the present and will echo on in the future because it's still with us in the food that we make and eat. And it's something that I want to continue the tradition of and pass on to my son and my family for future generations. Unfortunately, we don't have any footage of my grandfather. What we do have are some very, very precious photos. I'm gonna put some at the end of this video. So if you want to know what he looks like, if you want to know what we look like together, please stick around to the end of the video. And I hope you'll enjoy looking at them because they mean an awful lot to me. Right guys, I've already finely chopped two cloves of garlic and this is gonna help make the base of our soup. What I'm gonna do is I've got half an onion here and I'm also gonna finely chop that. I've got a cooked chicken breast here, which I did earlier. I just stuck it in the oven for about half an hour. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna finely chop it. Now chicken breast is what my grandfather used, but this recipe is very, very good at using leftover chicken. So if you've got a roast chicken that you've had, if you can strip the little shreds of chicken from the carcass, that will make fantastic meat and also reduce your waste when it comes to finishing off your chicken. So yeah, I'm just gonna cut it quite small. Um, because don't forget, this is a soup. <laughs> right guys, this is a very simple recipe. What I'm gonna do is to start by making a kind of a roux, um, which is like a white sauce base. So I'm gonna put about 50 grams of fat in here. I'm using one of those olive oil spreads. Butter is probably the best if you want absolute flavor, but obviously um, we can't be putting butter in everything, can we? <laughs> I say that with the knowledge that I'm gonna put double cream at the end of this, so, you know. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna melt this in our pan. Notice I'm using the non-stick wok today, because if we were using my steel wok, um, well, it's not like a waste of using a wok because a wok is very versatile, but obviously we don't want to do anything to the seasoning. We're boiling up some liquids today, which would probably not benefit the seasoning that we've already got on our steel wok. And as I've said before in, in my other wok video about which wok to use or which wok to buy, then you know a good old non-stick wok is a very, very handy thing to have and is amazing for 90% of people out there. Okay, so we've got that bubbling away. So what we're gonna do, our half finely chopped onion, we're gonna pop that in. Okay. 
and our finely chopped two cloves of garlic. I'm going to pop that in as well. And we're just gently going to cook these through. What we don't want to do is caramelise or give any colour to the onions or the garlic. Shake this bit of butter off. Okay, and we are just going to gently, gently cook them through. At this point, I like to season. Because obviously this is going to go through to the whole soup. So if we start seasoning now, doesn't mean we do all our seasoning. We're just kind of gradually build it up until we got the right amount. Don't overdo it. So a good pinch of salt there. There's no exact quantities for that. We'll taste and see how we go as we go. And I'm going to use white pepper because this seems to complement this soup better than black pepper. Okay, so a little bit there. We are going to add some more, so we're just going to get it started. Okay, look, it's just nicely softening the onions and the garlic, and that's what we want. So at this point, I've got two heaped tablespoons of plain flour, which I'm going to add into this. So this is kind of our traditional roux, although probably with a roux you haven't added any onions or garlic to it. And we're just going to gently, we don't want to burn it, gently, gently, gently stir it in. And the important bit here is we even, it's going to turn into a kind of like, almost like Play-Doh. It's going to almost gel up. And what we need to do is keep going and gently cook, and cook it out, um, which is one of those strange terms. What we need to do is actually incorporate the flour into the fat and then cook it so it becomes active or bonded with the fat. I think that's what the word is. I've I heard that um, cook it out phrase before. I never quite knew what it meant, but when I started doing these dishes, I believe that's what it meant. Because if you add liquid to it too early, the, the flour isn't cooked and it won't turn into a smooth liquid that you want for your soup. So we need to cook it for a few minutes until that's happened. Okay, so that's been about three or four minutes now. I think that's about done. I've got half a litre, or about a pint, of chicken stock, which I'm going to add to this. And obviously this is going to make the main body of our, our soup. You can actually use just plain water, but I like the extra flavour that chicken stock adds to it. I've just used a stock cube because uh, I'm lazy like that and I really don't have time to be boiling up carcasses. But obviously, if that's what your thing is, then please go ahead and do it. Okay, you can see it thickening up now nicely. I'm going to remove our wooden spoon, turn down the heat a bit, and I'm gonna add the whisk to it. I'm gonna whisk it up and this is gonna make sure that we get a smooth soup because we don't want any lumps forming. Okay, you can see how thick it is, can't you? All right. Now this is where we can actually judge kind of what sort of soup we want because we're gonna add some water to it and then we're gonna bring it to the consistency that we want. Um, I like quite a thick soup, not everybody does, so once we've stirred this in and made a smooth sauce, I'll call it a sauce for now. <laughs> I've got some pre-boiled water and we're going to add it until it's the right consistency. Obviously, if you want to make more soup, if you want to make for more people, then we use, you can double up all the quantities. Okay, double up the flour, onion, garlic, stock, everything, chicken, noodles. And this is enough, this, this portion that I'm making now is probably enough for two or three normal people. <laughs> but I've never called myself normal. 
I've never counted myself normal. I could probably polish this all off myself. Uh, I shouldn't really say that, but it's probably true. To this, I'm going to add a tiny bit of sugar. About half a teaspoon. And that's just going to kind of balance everything out and give us just a tinge of sweetness. It's not massively important. If you really are on a low sugar diet, then you don't have to put it in at all. Um, but it just adds that little extra. And even though it's not there yet, we want to be tasting for seasoning and seeing what that is like. Oh my gosh, that's not far off, you know. That is not far off. Don't forget, these stock cubes tend to be quite salty, so that's why I only added a little bit of salt to the base to start with. And I'm only just going to add a little bit more now, just a tiny bit. And a little bit more pepper. And that just gives it that little, little tiny bit of heat. Okay, there we go. Not that we're going to make it as spicy, but that, that just, especially with chicken, white pepper goes so well. So next, I'm going to add my chicken. This diced breast of chicken. Like I said, you could use leftover carcass from your roast chicken. You can, you can, if you don't have one of those, you could use obviously chicken breast, but if you like your brown meat, you can uh, roast some chicken f thighs and then rip up the meat. That's nice. And the noodles. Now these are egg noodles. If you are gluten intolerant, these have got wheat, so you probably can't have them, but you could equally use rice noodles and uh, they don't have gluten. If you go to your local Asian or Chinese supermarket, you'll find plenty of choice there. Just look at the label, you'll find something that suits your needs. What you can do, you can chop this into smaller bits so you, they, they make a good spoonful, right? But I've always liked slurping on noodles, so I like a long noodle, so I'm not gonna do that. Okay. And also, with egg noodles, you can get the dried variety, then you cook that like pasta, and then you can add it to your soup. But this is fresh and you can get this from your local supermarkets or western supermarkets seem to carry it now and instead of having to cook it before you put it in you can just drop it in fresh and as soon as it gets up to temperature you're done it's a very 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 good ingredient look at that i told you it's kind of more like a, the way i make it it is more like a meal than a soup or main course i suppose i'm gonna add a little bit more water before i taste again I think we're nearly there. And obviously the noodles are going to thicken this soup up as well a little bit. Okay. I'm going to taste this one more time. Oh yeah. To the pièce de résistance. I have got about, I don't know, uh, three or four tablespoons of double cream here. I'm probably not going to add it all. Um, we'll see. This is kind of suck it and see time. So we're going to add, I'm going to add half of it. it. It's quite a generous amount, trust me. And then it'll do that thing where it, oh yeah, look at that. Oh my gosh. It's like I was five again, watching my granddad do this. In fact, sometimes he would let me pour from the carton into the big vat of soup he was making. Because obviously he was making it on a nearly industrial scale. Look at that. Now this might be a little bit too much for you, but it's perfect for me. Um, yeah, and um, if you are health conscious, you don't have to use double cream. Creme fraiche works really, really well. Um, it's got a lighter flavor to it, obviously, and it's a little bit better for your waistline. That's all good. Let me taste that. Oh my God. All I can say is, thanks granddad. Honestly, I could be five. It's exactly the same flavor. There you go guys. Get your taste buds ready. There you go guys. From my family to your family. Time for tasting. Look at that.
Mm. This soup was not meant for polite eating. It was supposed to be slurped and get around your face and your mouth. But boy, it was that good. So it's everything you wanted from a soup, especially in cold weather. It's warming, it's creamy, it's satisfying, it's filling, it's Moorish. Honestly, I could eat all of that. I'm not exaggerating. I can, I have done before. <laughs> Even when it's this thick. Um, it's just something I come back time and time again for because it really is that good. And I hope you guys try it. I hope you love it as much as I do. Modify it to your own taste. Do whatever you want to do to it. Just, just, just do it, honestly. And hopefully this is one of those things that might get passed down to future generations. Right everyone, so thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this and share this out to anybody you think might want to make this soup or any of my other recipes, that would be great. But before you leave, please check out the pictures of me and my granddad. It's a little bit of my history and it's something personal that I wanna share with you because I think it's part of my story and why I'm doing this today. So I really hope you like them. Take care guys, thank you, bye bye.